welcome back to our next episode of the MDCP Million Dollar Coach Podcast, joined once again by Christina Anderson, Sam Burns, and Ash Capola. How are you, team? It's great. Killing it. Awesome. Everyone's pumped and excited, I can tell. Energy in the room is high. So today, <laughs> another slightly, I guess, esoteric conversation for us to have around um, all the things that, and the nuances that go into being coaches, go into being entrepreneurs, and this one is a pretty big one, is around creating, setting, and maintaining boundaries. Now, this can be a pretty broad topic, and it can cover everything from having boundaries around your pricing to know your worth, uh, and holding that, as and also not getting sucked into things that are not your niche. So, you know, let's let's run with this, guys, and uh, see where it takes us. Who wants to kick off? Well, Ash can kick off. She brought it to the table. Oh, oh sorry, Christina. There you that's go. Okay. No, go ahead, Ash. Um, I, forgive me. I'm a little winded. <laughs> um, this is something I think. Uh, I mean, like all of our other esoteric conversations, it's a always. It's it's nothing that like oh, okay conquered that done moving on. Um, it's just always evolving, right? Um, I think whether you are coaching in a CrossFit gym now and just like, hmm, I think I actually want to make this as like my future um, career or whether you are a specialty coach, you know, and have your niche and have our like way figured out down the line, it doesn't matter where you are in this, setting boundaries for yourself is so important, not only around your career and, you know, where you draw the line as a coach for you know, your, your scope of practice, but also, you know, making sure things aren't infringing on your family time, your personal hobbies. We can tend to put that stuff on the back burner and think, oh, well, it's not affecting my family. It's not affecting this. It's only affecting me. It's not a big deal. But the truth of the matter is you have to be your best self to be the best coach that you can be. So setting boundaries has a wide array of meanings and, and, places where it's important I and i many, get off my soapbox <laughs> i don't know how many times i've told myself the lie that no 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 it's not affecting my family it's not affecting my kids or anything like that um thank god i have a wife who <laughs> makes no bones about telling me otherwise <laughs> um i i love i love this concept of setting boundaries i also i also think that I know that, well, rather, I'll speak from my perspective. I know that when I started down this journey, I was very willing to say yes to a lot of things. And in addition to learning how to, for example, leave my phone and my watch, like, not on my body so that I could go be with my wife and be with my children. I literally, I have an Apple watch. I have to take it off because I, I you know, alcoholic, not really good at moderation. So I don't understand how to, like not pay attention to things like that and even do not disturb mode i am the guy who you know if you ever check um screen time data like the number of times you pick up your phone they track that don't look yeah. at that number my yeah. number is really embarrassing i i can't I, so I have to take all that stuff off in addition yeah. to creating ways to carve out time for my family and for my wife i also had to and am learning how to say no to things that are not going to serve me long term. I have to set boundaries for myself, not professionally in terms of like, you know, how, how I'm allotting my time, but things that are opportunities, things that could make me money, as an example, I have to say no to those things. I have to set a boundary because where I want to focus my attention or my time or my energy is in this particular direction because this is the direction that serves the goals that I've outlined for myself as being those that I hold in the highest regard. That's been my biggest struggle with regards to this. Hmm. Christina. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, um, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a little bit different setting than, uh, than the others on this call. Uh, and so every day I'm working with 10, 20, up to 50 plus members each day, depending on how many classes that I coach. Um, and for me, it's, um, you know, I want to, I want to be that person for everyone. And I have to learn that I can't, 
I can't possibly be. Um, and sometimes I'll, you know, I'll, I'll catch myself in situations like, um, you know, a, a group of guys comes to mind that's uh, in one of the classes that I coach almost daily. And um, if I give one of the guys in the group a compliment, all the other guys in the group are like, oh, teacher's pet, you know, and like everybody gets all riled up. Uh, and I have to be really mindful of, uh, you know, how close <laughs> my relationships are with people, right? Um, because it, you know, if you don't hold boundaries, um, you know, with the people that you interact with every day, how is that going to be perceived by the other people in the room? How is that going to be perceived by all of the, you know, clients or members that you work with on the daily, right? So it's also kind of like a balance of like, you know, you can only give so much to each person, not just for yourself, but also for everyone that you're working with. What's funny and is I know be... that group of guys too. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. And that can be the challenge is, you know, figuring out your own worth and whether that's around pricing, time, you know, um, energy, any of those sorts of things, you know, values, you know, non physical values, but, you know, setting out, you know, where are your hard stops and what is best for you and then going to help you move your own particular needle forward, whether that be personally, professionally, and, you know, we're all working towards, you know, our own goals in life. So, you know, is, the, and we talk a lot in Fitfiliate about action, uh, intention versus action. So is what you're doing getting you to where you say you want to be. So yeah. is doing this going to get me closer to what I say is my end goal or what I think I'm working towards? And I like that, you know, I think we all kind of touched on different versions of boundaries that don't only, don't only, you know, speak to the importance of setting a path as your direction as a coach and where you're trying to get to, but also just us as humans. And as, as the person we want to be, not only the coach in the career, right? And, you know, just to speak to, you know, yes, we're talking to mostly coaches here, but Fitfiliate has a wide array of followers of owners and even members, right? And us as coaches, our job is to also lead by example. So yeah. setting those boundaries, like, you know, Sam said, he's got to take his phone off and it may have nothing to do with work. It might just be funny Instagram or YouTube things popping up that would pull him in. Right. Like, yes, it's that. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, Christina with like boundaries with the members. And then it, it's just, you know, and one of our coaches on a internal call last week said something of, um, you know, I was offered to do this thing and it would make me a lot of money, but it's not a good use of my time. So Lisa, like you said, is that serving the direction of where you're going with your career? Mm -hmm. So being able to set those boundaries in all those different ways are really crucial to recognize first, right? Awareness precedes action. So I love how we kind of all have different examples of that um, and that we can bring it to the table because it's really, you know, we don't know where everyone is on their journey. So to have all these different things, it's really important, I think, to kind of discuss how they can affect us. Sure. Uh, it and makes me, sorry. You go, Christina. I feel like we need like a, I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I was just going to say that it reminds me a lot of the conversation that we had um, a couple weeks back, um, like the, who are you outside of, you know, your coach hat or your entrepreneur hat, you know, whatever it is. I mm. think that when these boundaries get blurred, um, you can really lose sight of who you are, right? And you can really get wrapped up in, you know, either you're taking on the identity of, I want to make this person stronger at their back squat. If I don't, I'm a failure as a human being. Or are you holding that boundary and realizing like, I'm going to impart all of my knowledge uh, and support onto you. And if we're not there yet, that's okay. You know, and, and I'm going to move on and realize that I have two kids at home and I have a whole life outside of what I'm doing. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this whole boundaries thing, like it, it has such a bigger picture than just simply, um, you know, 
not to diminish what you said, Sam, because you're hundred percent right, but it's not just putting your phone away, right? Like, it's just like, there's a bigger, there's a bigger need yeah. for these boundaries because we have to protect ourselves and, and who mm. we are. And I think, you know, um, someone um, shared with me many years ago, a, a really amazing example of around, you know, as coaches, we struggle to, 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 take money for things at times you're like oh I feel bad about Icky taking the money and this particular coach that I knew he was going to give this client you know something for for nothing and it was it was I don't know it was a hundred dollars it wasn't like you know earth shattering amount um but his wife went and put a hundred dollars into uh his toddler's hands in the pram and said cool if you go do this um, you're taking that from your child. So go take it from your child right now. And um, he was like, well, fuck. Like no. that was to, to yeah. physically go to his child and take that $100 off the child and then go, yeah, okay, cool. Wow. Understood. I'm, I'm off. Thank you for the, for the realignment kind of deal. But, you know, it's, being able to understand, like you said, Christina, we have those bigger impacts rather than just, you know, um, it's remove distractions and and all those sort of things and, and it's where I want to head, but also what are the costs if I and the impacts if I don't set and maintain mm -hmm. these boundaries around my um, worth, whether it be financial um, time, energy, any of that. If I don't do this, what is the cost? And for some of us, we go, oh, well, you know, it's just an hour out of my day or it's this or it's that or I was doing it anyway. But when you really sit down and look at it in like the context of that example, it can be quite powerful to highlight like there's actually a cost to everything and, am, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? Am I willing to pay this cost? to get to this, which is not necessarily maybe going to get me closer to where I want to be. Yeah. First of all, that person in that example woke up and chose violence. Dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, right? All, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, effective. So I can't argue with that. I think, I think a lot of times, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but it feels, it feels like we're talking about the difference between being responsible for someone or something and responsible right. to someone or something. Mm. Right. I'm responsible for very little. Thank God. I'm responsible for my kids. You know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm not responsible for my wife. I'm responsible to my wife, but I'm certainly not responsible for my clients. I'm not responsible for the other coaches who work with me. I'm responsible to them in the sense that I make myself available to these people in a very structured and specific way to provide them the opportunity, provide them knowledge, to provide them a path. It's not my job to drag them kicking and screaming. I don't do that with the people who work with me. I don't do that with the clients or anything like that. And so if I am clear on the difference between responsible to and responsible for, it starts to like realign things kind of naturally. Mm -hmm. And I love that we're talking about, you know, understanding what's important and then setting boundaries to serve that. Well, if you have truly sat down and said, this is what's important, you know, like there's a Maslow's hierarchy, right? What's at the top, right? And Maslow's hierarchy is like a, a bottom up thing. But if you have a pyramid, like everything is the most important things at the top of the pyramid. If you really suss that out and you say that thing really is the most important thing, that's what I'm responsible for. Everything else has to get filtered through the, the lens of, does it serve that thing or not? And if it mm. does, I do it. And if I don't, I don't. Or if it doesn't, mm. I don't. And if I violate that, that's that's where we get into that. I don't know about anybody else, but that's where I get into like that soul sickness window where it's, mm. I know I'm stepping over a line. I, on a line that I created for myself, you know? Right. And those boundaries help me understand Am I actually living in accordance with the way that I want to live as like a human being independent of my goals professionally? And I think this comes back to our, you know, age old discussion. If you've, if you've listened to this podcast or the Fitfiliate podcast for more than like an introduction 
at the start of the episode, you all know that everything comes back to having a strong why. Because, you know, one of the things that people ask is like, well, how do I set these boundaries? Well, it becomes very simple when you know what is at the top of your pyramid Mm -hmm. and you know exactly where it is that you're heading and what you are compelled to do without a question of a doubt. And in coaching, when we talk about that we're called to serve and we're called to, you know, we want to help, is um, even some of that discussion around, you know, accepting money and charging for things is like, if I don't take money from you for this service, I'm not serving you. I'm not because, you know, again, if you've listened to the the Fitfiliate podcast for more than three seconds, people who pay, pay attention. And you need to have some skin in the game, as we all know, through our own journeys of being coached and coaching that, you know, if people are not invested in it and we say we do it for free, they're not going to value it because, well, I didn't value myself enough to charge you or to hold that time. So, you know, why are they going to value me and then keep that commitment, give their best effort and, you know, all of those sort of things. So when we come back to our ultimate, like what's at the top of the pyramid, what's our why, everything else becomes really easy to fill in the blanks and the steps in that. Yeah. And to put the cherry on top of that, Lisa, with what you're like, with what we preach at Fit Affiliate, the four freedoms, Mm. right? Like freedom of time, freedom of purpose, relationships and money. So like that example with the hundred dollar bill and the child, like that's not only that wasn't just a financial symbolism, like that was relationships. That was perfect. Like that smacked all of his why up front for him. And, Mm. you know, when we talk about boundaries it not yet i'm I'm like i'm getting my brain's going faster than my mouth can go (laughs) um but in order to be able to set the boundaries that we need we have to like you said we have to have that why super clear and then we have to remember those freedoms that we're working towards in you know, anytime you're not sure about something or you're like, oh, instinctively, I want to say yes to this pause, right? Like you don't have to answer anything right away unless it's life or death. And if it's life or death, it's pretty clear what you need to do, right? So like Hmm. pause, just freaking pause and ask yourself those questions. What's my why? Does this bring me closer to any of those four freedoms? Yes or no? Go ahead, Christina. Sorry. No, 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 you're fine. I just like, I just want to offer a different perspective because I think, um, you know, I completely agree with what both of you are saying, but in my personal situation, it gets really muddy because for me, a big reason why I do what I do and like the core of my why is because I grew up without love, without feeling loved, without being loved without feeling valued. And for a majority of my life, I was unloved. And that is something that I struggle with deeply. Um, And so for me, uh, you know, in the form of finding CrossFit, finding worth within myself, discovering, you know, what I'm capable of, that became my why as to why I coach, you know, why I want to be in this space to give people what I lacked in my life to give as much love as I possibly can. The problem is for me, when I tune into my why, a lot of times that does cause me to sometimes give too much of myself because I want to be for everyone that person that I needed. So while I completely agree, I think even within our why, we still need to understand, like, I need to differentiate between the love that I need to show to my children and the love that I show to every single athlete that I work with every day, right? So it's like, you have to, um, I guess, not just have a why, but clearly define it. Because if it's too broad, things get a little Mm. muddy. 
Well, and you and, just right there kind of set a boundary, right? You defined the love for your children versus the love for your members and front, like, so, but yes, that could easily get, it is one thing, right? Love is love. Money is money too. But that, that coach that said, you know, he wants financial freedom, but he knew that even though that thing was great money, when he kind of paused and reflected on all the other things that are in his why and that that specific way to get that financial benefit for that one time was only going to lead him in a different direction than where he wanted to go. So mm -hmm. like Christina, I like, first of all, you were super vulnerable. So like, thank you. But that also brought up a really good point of like, we make, we talk about this esoteric stuff and try to simplify it to make it relatable. But that right there to be able to distinguish the difference and those different boundaries didn't happen overnight for you. No. Right. But it's mm. there. It's, and so it's also <laughs> like, it's, yeah. And it's going to continue, like it, it's going to continue. And I think that is like something that we can forget when we get in these conversations, but like, we're not saying it's easy to do. We're just saying, oh, this is something that we've noticed is super important. Mm. And, I, and it is, it's challenging as fuck. Mm. But the more you know it exists, you can start to try and, you know, take a piece here, put it over there, mm. take a piece there. Does that go in that or that? Like, and just know that it's something to keep your eyes open to. So it sounds a little bit like we're describing that it's difficult to set boundaries. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> which, which is, well, that's, Novel that's, concept. that's shattering. Yeah. But, you know, I see the concept of boundaries as multiple, like, interlocking circles you know it's like mm. i've you know there are some things that overlap but it's like christina mm. where you spoke about here's some hard boundaries i've got around my kids yeah and the hard boundaries i have around clients are not going to overlap that mm. but you know if there were other like family commitments or whatever then that's gonna sort of maybe not fall into that circle but maybe just on the edge so we've got you know we're not talking about having well this is my boundary that's it like there are different things that suit different situations that we're working in. Um, and, you know, one of the things we we talk about and we have trademarked in Fitfiliate is our, you know, action, uh, distraction, action, traction continuum, where we talk about, like, avoiding distraction because that's the peril. And by not having boundaries is where we can get distracted, you know, and run off and go, hey, that's a good thing, I'm going to go do that. Or, you know, I've just spent four hours Googling some shiny matte black goodness from from our friends at Rogue versus, you know, actually doing some work on my business and structuring my business and doing the things. And sometimes that's the the hard stuff and we're like, yeah, it's not it's like working on your overhead squat. Ain't nobody got time for that. But, you know, everyone wants to work on the fun, sexy stuff. So they're coming in and they're, you know, we want to deadlift and bench and do the the fun stuff. But by having those boundaries and whether they're, you know, little sort of circles everywhere and where they overlap, but giving you that sense of what is my purpose right now? What is the thing that I need to be doing right now mm -hmm. versus chasing shiny objects, which means our boundaries are useless. We're not even setting boundaries around our own time as in this is what I need to work on right now. Yes, Sam, I'd love to, you know, jump on a, chat with you and 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 talk about all sorts of you know things and philosophize about life but right now I need to get this done so it's creating that boundary this that would be fun but is that going to get me closer well no it's fun it's a distraction I can get to it later because that's an important value that I talk to the people who I want to talk to yeah but right now this is where I need to be and by aligning my values I can communicate that to Sam and say hey I can't right now because I really need to work on X, Y, Z. Um, but hey, let's work at a time that works for both of us. And I, and I think a little bit in, in practice, this is going to be a little bit of a chicken and an egg scenario for some people. They're going to say, mm. all right, I know what my values are and, or I know, I know what my priorities are. Let's say that. And then based on that, I'm going to set some boundaries for myself. Inevitably, because you're human, you're going to mess that up. Right, because nobody does anything perfectly the first time. Mm -hmm. Never seen it happen. Thank so, you. yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna screw that up, Good right? That. Go that, like, know that going in. I'm gonna give you an yeah. F to start, so don't go looking for the A. And then you're gonna have to realign. 
And you go back and be like, okay, based on that experience, did what I experience tell me that I violated my boundaries based on what I said was a priority or that I discovered that I actually have different priorities? Mm. And so you have to go back and like rejigger. And then you say, okay, this is where I'm going to head now. And then you go and you screw it up again. And it's not that you're like, it's not a binary thing. I hate to use that language where it's like, I screwed up or I didn't screw up. Yeah. But you're going to you're gonna bump up against friction, I guess is the way I want to describe it, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I am actually being clear and understanding what it is that I want to set as a priority and then am actually acting in accordance with that, the likelihood that I'm going to experience friction between those two things is less, not zero, but less, right? And I will go back and forth and realign. And this is why it helps to have a coach or a mentor, because you can bounce these ideas off of them and get like an <laughs> independent viewpoint from someone who is not the itty bitty shitty committee of one, right? <laughs> right? I feel like so we can have some that. of these subjects on loop just understand that we're going to talk about these things again, <laughs> right? again. And, and until you get it the people at the back hear it like we're going to keep talking about these things well and truth be told some people first of all some people need to hear this shit a lot i need to hear this shit a lot right <laughs> some people have never listened to it they're going to pop on this is going to be the first time they're going to say it they're going to hear that and going to be like darn what a novel concept and we've been talking about it for a year yeah I, it's okay to not have it figured out. Mm. Anyone who says they do is lying, by the absolutely, way. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and the standard that I set for myself is it's okay to not have it figured out. It's not okay to not try to figure it out. And so for me, what that means is I don't have to um, have it perfect, but I have to try. And so if I am trying, then at least I'm trying to make forward progress. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to honestly assess what didn't go as well as it could have and what could I change to make it more optimal next time. What is not okay is being like, screw it, I'm out. Hmm. And um, Lisa said something earlier, and I don't, I'm, I don't have the wording right, but she said, you know, like saying to people like, I'm sorry, I can't, oh, it was Sam in the philosophizing, whatever. You know, I'm sorry, I can't do that now because I have to do X, Y, Z. Also, this could be a whole nother podcast. Sam but, philosophizing? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think we have enough hours in the day. We really that, don't. <laughs> um, you don't have to explain yourself. Mm. You don't have yeah. to, I, and I am so guilty of that. Anytime I'm telling somebody no or like asking for something, it's like, I have to explain the entire world of why. And you don't need to, you can just say, no, I'm sorry. Thank you for the offer, but no. Yeah. Right. Like, I think, you know, some of that comes down to, for example, like it, that's easier in certain situations than others. So for sure. like, if I was going to say no to Christina, then I, because I value her, I'm going to say, Hey, like, you know, listen, I can't do that right now. I've really got to work on this thing. And because of our relationship, she will get that go to totally. Let's reschedule. If it's somebody, you know, that it can be easier when it's somebody that you've, you know, it's truly a transactional relationship and it's, it's very client. It's, it's very easy to do. No, thank you. Much easier and do it, you know, respectfully rather than having to, like you said, Ash, unload the whole, you know, scenario of exactly why you can't do that thing. Um, but it be becomes, again, it's aligning with your values and, and understanding the relationships and where that relationship fits in your particular boundaries as yeah. to how you can navigate that. And, you know, if you've established that boundary about and that definition, what that relationship is, again, it becomes a lot easier to do, to go, okay, well, this is in, you know, professional, it's da -da -da, that's a no thank you. Oh, this, you know, overlaps into my personal stuff and it's, you know, I've got a deeper relationship with this person. Hey, look, I would love to chat about this. Um, can we just put a pin in it for, you know, two days and let's tic-tac back together again? And because of that relationship, that's going to be more easily received. 
So, you know, there's a... Tic-tac, yeah. yeah, It's it's like back and forth. Is that just an Australian thing? Yeah, okay, cool. I think so. Um, I think so. We do actually eat Tic Tacs over here. I don't know if you guys... Oh, there you go. (laughs) We we have... So I always Um, imagine these little little lolly things. But I digress. But it makes it easier by establishing those boundaries and also your values to then make those decisions about who is a no thank you or what is a no thank you versus a, hey, I'm really sorry. Um, you know how much I value you. Let's, you know, set aside a day to have this conversation yeah. or whatever it needs to be. And then if you've squared away all the things that you know are going to get you further forward, you then, as Ash was talking about earlier with our four freedoms, I have the freedom of time and then the freedom of purpose to pursue what I want to pursue with the people I want to pursue it with. And so if I decide to sit down and talk about all things esoteric with them for a day, that's great because right. that work I've put in, those boundaries, my priorities, my goals, and my values have allowed me to have this freedom. Really mm-hmm. quickly, that is another that's another freedom. That's freedom of relationships. Yes, right? I was yeah. gonna Yes. Mm. High five guys. Woohoo. Yeah. Christina, you got something <laughs> to say? I don't want to talk over you. Well, I was just gonna say too, like I think um, you know, sometimes it's it's just a matter of adjusting expectations, right? Like I think we all kind of like feel like we have to do everything right away. And it's like, mm. I I was at a level one seminar this weekend and um, the flow master just said like, hey, listen, like this is my email. And like, you know, it, we really encourage people to reach out. Like I encourage people to reach out, like, please shoot me an email, shoot me a DM, something, because I know that I got to where I am today in my journey because I reached out and because people answered my email. But then she said, it may take me like 10 days to get back to you, but I promise I will get back to you. Right. So like she has kind of a system and, and I kind of, I already have rejiggered my own um, like way that I handle anything incoming towards me where it's like, okay, I no longer am going to get to this right now because that Mm. throws everything off. Right. But if I just blanket, let people know in the universe, like, Hey, reach out anytime, give me up to 10 days. And if you don't hear from me, reach out again. But like, then I can have my set time every day. That's like email time or DM time or, you know, whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. because, you know, I want, I want to, to talk to all the people and like, yes, I can't, you can't help everyone. But a a lot of the times when, you know, people are reaching out, people need help. You know, people are going to reach out to us because we constantly preach that, you know, you need a coach, you need guidance, you need support. uh, And we're here for you. Reach out to us. We may Mm. not get back to you instantly because we're trying to be able to do all the things to the best of our capacity. Right. But Mm. um, I think just as a society, like, from our perspective and from the outside perspective, like we all just need to stop expecting that, you know, just because you send a text message means that you're, everybody's going to drop everything and instantly get back to you. You know, it just, mm. it's not realistic. No. Well, first of all, yes, I agree. Also second, it's never going to happen because people are going to expect what people are going to expect. The, the onus mm. is always going to be on me, the individual to do exactly what you said to define clear rules for communication really quickly has anyone ever heard of the eisenhower matrix no yeah no? We that. okay yeah, yeah yeah so the eisenhower matrix when dwight eisenhower went into the oval office he won the presidency i believe they were in the middle of world war ii and his chief of staff brought him an unopened piece of mail and he said here you go mr president and he said do not ever bring me an unopened piece of mail ever again and so his point was I'm the president of the United States. I have no idea what's in this envelope. The things that come across my desk should only be the most important things. And so we developed this matrix really quickly. Here it is. It's things that are urgent or not urgent and important or not important, right? Mm. So if it's urgent and important, you do it immediately. If it's not urgent, uh, pardon me, it's urgent but not important, you delegate it. If it's not important, pardon me, not urgent, but important, you do it later. And if it's not urgent and not important, you don't touch it. You literally throw it away. That was the Eisenhower matrix. But this, it's really hard to do all of this. We are not wired 
for this. We're not wired to stand on our own and say, nope, I'm okay. These are my boundaries. We are hardwired at the genetic level to seek approval from as many human beings as possible. Because 50,000 years ago, not seeking approval meant being on your own in the middle of the night, far away from the fire without the safety of the tribe. Right. That's, mm. that's gene deep in every single human being. And of course it's not necessary now because you know, iPhones and DoorDash and all that stuff. But at the same time, it doesn't make it any easier to override that need to want to immediately respond to someone or want to say yes to every opportunity for fear of being judged if I say no. Not because it's good for me to say yes, but like I'm worried about what I think someone might think about me if I maybe say no to this thing that I know won't serve my best interest. How insane do I sound when I say that? And yet I do that stuff all the time. So to give you and a we level, do. Yeah. Yes. And we, we'll we get sucked into instant response to things through mm -hmm. the, the dopamine hits we get from notifications where, oh, ding, text must reply. Like, you know, 20 years ago when there were no phones, no text, no work email, oh, you left work amazing. at 5 p.m. Friday and you didn't think about it till late there Monday. You went, that's, that's something that can wait. Whereas now I'm guilty of it. We answer emails at times and a text and even though we're like, I eh, probably shouldn't do this right now and this is annoying, as soon as it goes ping, we're like Pavlov's dog. We're like, oh, I need to go do something here. So, you know, I guess as we get towards um, sticking a pin in this episode is what's – I'm going to ask each of you for like your key takeaway for, you know, coaches, entrepreneurs, affiliate owners out there around, you know, boundaries. So, Ash, throwing the ball to you first. <laughs> um, first, take a second to become aware of a boundary that you're not upholding that bothers you, right? Because if you tend to get irritated by something, it's likely because a boundary was crossed. You just didn't even know you needed to set it. Mm -hmm. um, so reflect on that and then ask yourself what's one thing you could do to help uphold it. Perfect. Sam. Figure it out or it's going to figure you out. Because like. <laughs> Probably already is. Yeah. Like the things that, I mean, if it's within your control, either you are being deliberate about it or it is being deliberate with you and you yeah. get to choose where you are in that relationship. Yep. And Christina, final thoughts. Yeah, I think we need to remember that setting boundaries is not a means of you know, ending a relationship, it's a means of making it so that you can continue and have a good relationship with another person. Mm. Um, okay. You know, so that's yeah. great. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's a really powerful note to end on. I think it's well. don't see yeah. boundaries as a Thanks. Christina coming in hot with the zinger. <laughs> the the yeah, Somebody clip Thanks that for, for Instagram. Thank, Thanks for coming. To my <laughs> talk. I out. But, uh, <laughs> thank you. This has been a, a, I think, a much needed conversation that I don't think anyone else is talking about. So I knew that you guys would be the best people to talk about this with for sure. Uh, remember, guys, if you like Christina, we've made her day now. If you <laughs> like our content, please subscribe, leave us a review, share it with a coach, affiliate owner, entrepreneur who you think could benefit from it. Remember to head over and follow us on Instagram at fitfiliate. That's where all the good stuff is. That's where you'll find us hanging out. Shoot us a DM. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop a comment below. We'd love to have a conversation with you back and forth. But for you three guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace, Peace out. Bye. Bye.